Apologies for the wait. The preparations here are finally complete. Excellent. The Tower 2 is activated. But give the word and we will begin channeling the ether. Very well then. Make it so. The moment of truth. The sisters! Oriange, commence your invocations. Tis time to open our gate. beginning to form. Quickly, activate the brands! The gate is open, and the seal appears to be in place. Let's see how well it holds. I dare say the seal doth serve its purpose. Indeed. Just this moment, a void scent emerged from the gate, by which we may safely assume it leads to the 13th. It's incredible, Ishtola. Truly incredible. Oh, what an honor it is to have been part of this historic achievement. A part is an understatement. None of this would have been possible without you and yours. Our success has also served to solidify our understanding of cross-rift travel. 
the Asians rejoined reflections to the source by instigating elemental imbalances. These imbalances weakened the barrier between realities, causing the ether of a reflection to flood the source. But why is it that reflections are predisposed to rejoin the source? Why have they never merged with one another? Thou art suggesting there is a unique property inherent to the source, one responsible for such an outcome. I am. Tis my conclusion that, as the point of origin for the reflections, the source has an innate pull over them. Hydaelyn, I believe, sought to suppress that pull, which is why she was created with the power of light, of stasis. Meanwhile, the power of darkness, of activity, reigns in the void. Hydaelyn's influence would naturally be weaker, and this manifested in the form of planar fissures. Working with this hypothesis, I set my sights upon where the pull was assessed to be strongest, and through our combined efforts we succeeded in opening a gate to the void. Now, I must stress, it was because we sought the void that we succeeded. Pleased though I am to have my theory proven, the secrets of travel to other reflections still elude us. Even so, in the reality that lies beyond the Eighth Umbral Calamity, there are those who found a way to reach the first. I will not rest until I do the same. One step closer to fulfilling your dream, eh? Just a step. Many more remain to be taken. which further motivates me to forestall a void sent invasion. So come, let us set forth to find Ashdaya and put an end to Golbez's plot. Climb upon my back. I shall take us to the gate. As we did discuss prior, I shall see the alchemists safely home, then together with the Loperitz, maintain vigil over the gate. May the sisters watch over and keep you safe.
This is the moon of the 13th. It is. Ever since the flood, it has been a sanguinary orb in the sky. No void scent. A rather more subdued reception than I had anticipated. But unsurprising, given how jealously Golbez conceals the location of his domain. Still, we must remain on guard. One of his minions came through the gate, after all. And more may lie in wait. I do not sense my sister. Where could she be? Where? Steady, Vritra. We've barely arrived. Let us explore our surrounds before drawing conclusions. Yes. Thou art right. I shall survey the moon from above. The ground I leave to you all. The chasm has caught your attention as well. There's some manner of structure below. Worth a look, wouldn't you say? I too sense something here. This pit much resembles the Cradle of Darkness on our moon, where Zodiac was once imprisoned. If this place serves the same function, then a fragment of his power must have been sealed in the depths. 
Strange, though. When Zodiac perished in the Source, I presumed that every aspect of him was thus unmade, and his power scattered. But it's unmistakable. The darkness that permeates this abyss. Could a trace of him yet remain? Or is it something else? You were entrusted with Ajdaya's eye, were you not? So this is indeed Golbez's domain.
Does this great worm intend to remain a captive meal for all eternity, not daring to test her chains? to start. So, what can you tell us? Shall we look into this spot near and dear to our enemy's heart? <laughs> 